Cars again. I've been working on my kicks a little bit. But also, um, I've been playing around with this um, this uh, pre-fade idea that I was exploring in one of the previous videos, um, which is quite cool. So what we're listening to at the moment is this synth sound through the effects only. Which means you can do stuff like this. So um, I could play around this for a while. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting because I definitely, so when I'm using hardware, uh, well this is hardware, but when I'm using the Mac Domain Studio stuff, um, I really like using uh, my mixer to set the pre-fade. So I have the ability to basically have a really kind of wet signal from the effects um, and they kind of introduce the sort of dry volume of the uh, sort of sound. Um, the rhythm doesn't allow you to do that. Um, but I found a way while dusting <laughs> this machine that allows me to do that really effectively. So um, essentially what happened, um, and I mentioned this in another video, but um, that I basically had the output of uh, one, uh, the left output of the rhythm sent to my sound card. And um, while I was dusting it, I just adjusted the pan dial here. And then all of a sudden, because the effects are sent out the main, um in in you know the left and the right this means you can mix between a dry signal when it's left and uh, obviously turn down you know the effects so we have this and then you can turn up the effects which is normal but then you can turn it to the right hand side and you have only effects so this might not be quite apparent if it's delay but this uh because we're kind of hearing like a really short delayed version of that like the timing's really really short uh, and the pans over, the widths over. But if we put it on reverb, you can kind of hear this more obvious. So we have just the reverb. And then back to the dry signal again, which is really, really cool. So you can kind of do balancing between the two sounds, which I really, really like. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm quite distracted because um, my I think my neighbor's chopping up a body. They're scraping something against the wall at a certain time every day. Sounds very scary, like sharpening knives. Uh, I hope you can't hear it. It's the most scary thing. <laughs> um, I'll try to try to ignore it. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty amazing, this, uh, this kind of area. So um, obviously you've got the flexibility of um, having all the EQ and filters and stuff, well not EQ, but the low pass and high pass filters on the uh, delay, how that's sent to the reverb like normal, but you have it kind of like as a, a source in its own right, as opposed to the effect of the sound, um, you know, so having that over to the right hand side, putting that just on, just on a delay, like you saw at the start, you get this pretty pretty cool thing 
Um, you might be thinking, well, you can do that on the band pass anyway, right? But then obviously you can mix them so I can have the band pass on here, have that on its own setting, and then introduce, you know, the uh, the second one on the EQ, which is really helpful. So for example, um, if I have this, this kind of different setting on the quick performance amount, and you can't really notice the difference too much on the low uh, when it's turned up, but... So you have a bit more of a consistent sound, and this is only really delicate changes. Um, kind of a more resonant sweeping kind of thing. On a normal. This is kind of the difference. But just on the FX. So you can really get into like sort of high frequency buzzes or, or kind of weird kind of textures. Um, you could filter it down just to kind of add some background sound and then bring in, you know, have this filtered down and then bring in the dry. So really nice like attempts at just sort of transitioning, which is really, really cool. Um, so I'm enjoying this a lot. Um, I've been kind of playing around with this little project for a, sort of a few days, just kind of on and off, um, mainly actually to uh, try and get my kick drums good. So as you might remember, the other one, I kind of feel I need to up my kick drum so, game. So this is kind of where I'm at with it through, I don't know, quite a lot longer than I'd want to really spend on a kick drum, but this is kind of what we've got. Um, so I've got the, the bass, but I'll take away the bass. So we've got that high, kind of kick which is uh on this track um which is uh bd silky um high past some aggressive uh, actually that's not being used i don't think yeah the envelope filter's not being used but i can kind of control the distortion and uh i can control the levels the gain staging of all those sections to sort of get them sort of where i want and then equally i've got a similar thing um i think it's BD acoustic on uh, the other one just to try to find something to give me enough sweep and movement in the bass uh, but also kind of boomy um, and just kind of finding that mix so kind of feels okay I feel kind of happy with it um, it's not normally how I would do kick drums so actually I was looking at Mike Parker's uh, it's the Bleepazoid part 2 track that's on uh, let me see if I can swipe I don't know, I've, opened, I've shut it on my computer, but uh, it's on some label. Bleeper Side Part 2, Mike Parker, but there's a kick drum in there that's got this really kind of sharp, beautiful, kind of clicky quality to it, but this boom. And I was looking at that boom on an analyzer just to see, like, why, why is, why, to my taste, why does that sound so good? And it seems like there's just enough of a movement, like like that, just from a higher frequency to a lower frequency. And we're talking probably like 10, 10 hertz movement, just cycling around every time the kick happens. So I was kind of trying to find ways to give the kick drum enough, the bass part of the kick drum at least, enough movement that kind of has this drop off ever so slightly. And I'm not getting that with the kind of sweeps and stuff alone on the kick drums. Um, they just seem to aggressive and interestingly on the analyzer as you start kind of using those sweeps we're talking like 200 hertz up there's a massive bump so i'd recommend you do this if you're finding it difficult to look at your kick drums just get a get a graphic um get a uh, equalizer um, um what am i looking for like an analyzer um like an ableton or whatever and run this through it live and just see what's happening because it's quite a, annoying kind of mid-high or sort of like mid-low bump I guess that's happening so to kind of get around that I started using uh, just a sine wave on the uh, LFO and then uh, modulating the frequency so I could just kind of have a bit of control and then using the phase uh, to just to try to find like a smooth spot that was being re-triggered that created enough of a curve uh, fitted in with the kind of you know the kind of tone and stuff I'm looking for with a kick drum so that gives me a lot more fine tuning and fine control over the bass movement um, 
equally i could like have a with a second kick drum or like an underlying kick drum and this is you know this isn't anything brand new this, people <laughs> people do this all the time it's just i don't typically do this uh i can kind of have a little bit of a snap on it with the um the bass so if i kind of remove the bass one uh, the, the kick one this is kind of what we got you can hear there's a little bit of there's a little bit of movement happening there and the click just adds that kind of like 909 heavy distorted sort of or lightly distorted i should say uh punch which is quite nice um yeah and you could obviously like boom the hell out of this there's loads more that can happen on the decay on that boom um there if you wanted to also just softening the attack of that like bass because having it colliding was causing a lot of problems so just giving each sort of frequency enough space to sort of work which you know i'm it kind of it's just a different sound i wouldn't say it's better or worse but mike parker obviously spends a lot of time fine fine tuning his kick drums and his sound so to get that sort of sound it's kind of where you got to go with it um i don't know it was kind of fun i kind of fun getting close but i was finding i was having to come back a lot and listen to it again to sort of really tell if it actually is good or not um and this this version i've come back to a few times since the last video and been like yeah it still kind of sounds okay so it must be all right um the uh sort of raspy synth sound is uh the sy dual again um which i really like uh i don't think i've got any crazy parameters on this one no it's all flat so no modulation happening on it it's just sort of a simple cycle but i do remember there being kind of quite a bit of um and my memory's so bad there's actually was loads of parameter locks on there but there isn't anymore so it's pretty straight which is interesting um so that's cool um this was like this was like the main sort of riff i started with and then i sampled this riff because i was noticing if you listen there's almost like some high i don't know if youtube's gonna pick this up very well but there's a kind of like very high frequency sort of hi hat like pattern um there's a kind of like a high frequency clicking kind of thing that's happening if i play it for a bit maybe you'll notice it so it's a bit difficult to pick up on but um i could hear it in certain settings so i wanted to capture that and put that as a sample and then create some other sounds with it so um and there's two sort of versions of this there's one that's like i think i pitched it down in the end i did and then there's one that's more straight but um is a kind of smaller section so i picked like a short sample and then ended up finding uh something new in it and pitching it and then a different version that was a longer version a longer sample so like a full 16 bars i think using the new sampler um that connects to like uh how many beats per bar or whatnot uh it's really handy because you can just like hit sample capture a section know it's all going to lock in and then you've got like a quite a solid starting point which you can then adjust parameters to you know so like it's not you haven't got to worry about getting it in time you can kind of move off of in time or even if you you know press record out of time it's still going to be kind of locked in but in a different phase which is i find really really useful when you're just trying to essentially get a groove so we got this one which is just a kind of rolling like you know that kind of rolling style and this also quite works quite well with the decay uh the uh, delay You can hear on this one that dink 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 thing that was in the original pit, the original pan. So, but I still wanted the hi hat kind of quality. So then there was this one, but I still didn't do, I kind of sequenced it a bit differently. So there's a kind of some specific triggers and each of these triggers do have different parameter locks. I think mainly on the filter and some kind of like delay sections within it just to, not like anything crazy but just to give it a different sort of movement per step so you've got that sort of like high and then back to low like on the filters so just kind of moving these filters around basically um, and a softer sort of attack on the filter uh, envelope 
And this also sounds kind of fun with the delay. And of course, when you go to like a pre-fade or a wet only, if you want to either or call it either which, um, you can go into a different kind of pattern, which is quite useful. So it sort of shifts it, and obviously that's dependent on where you put your delay times. Um, my delay time is set to zero, or like very, like one, one out of 128, but um, I always set triggers on my FX track so I can have like fine tuning using a depth and this kind of setup, um, which just gives you, gets you out of that locked, uh, synced kind of sound, which I find annoying. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's basically, that is it. Um, and just that combination of having like uh, enough control between turning up the delay, turning sort of this wet dry or this pre-fade post kind of fade sort of mix idea across the three different sort of buzzy sounds, you get quite a lot of control out of just that, which is really, really cool. Um, uh, and then obviously you can introduce reverb. Um, it kind of ends up being like, I find a reverb begin that it's now mono because I'm using one output can sometimes be a bit like uh, less, predictable in the sense of how reverb is typically with this machine because normally you have this like baked in stereo spread all the time depending on where your decay is we you don't get this anymore because it's in mono but um so it ends up being a bit more metallic like textural so in the case of um i know it's in the case of this sound um having the reverb on it is kind of interesting so if we put it we'll put it to the to the wet only So we could filter that. So you can kind of have like a moody background, but it's like percussive almost. And obviously, um, you know, you could do the pre delays and whatnot as well. So I find that's quite useful. Um, the other thing that's useful is doing that with just the delay. So you can kind of go in. Uh, just turning the reverb up and turning the dry or the volume of the delay down itself and then still turn the delay up so you've got like an additional shift of where the delay affects the reverb and the reverb itself plus the pre-delay so you've got quite a lot of structural rhythmical timing considerations with just where the reverb plays which is quite useful um, I mean you kind of get that anyway but with the additional flick between the pans of wet dry you've got a bit more which is pretty awesome sort of thing I really like as well that you can kind of go from this sort of slightly intense sort of feel depending on where the um, filters are set in the, de in the in the delay or effects section and then sort of transition into a cleaner version depending on which way you go in so you've got this sort of like lightening of the groove which gives you space to introduce other stuff or like bringing in some intensity again which I really, really like yeah that's basically it right so um i'm pretty happy uh it sounds pretty cool it's 
very Mike Parker, but then I've been listening to a lot of Mike Parker at the moment. I just kind of want to get, I don't know, sometimes I find it useful just to sort of emulate someone else's sound a little bit, just to kind of give me a sense of what I, you know, especially if I'm trying to get that, that same quality. Um, it's fine, right? Just to kind of copy, like people get a bit weird about this, but I think it's fine. Just copy someone else's style and their sound, especially if you're trying to explore and work out like why your own sounds don't quite get in that same space. It's kind of helpful just to kind of retread their steps a little bit and get that sort of quality. And then, you know, you've only got to shift things around a little bit and you're already, and kind of tailor it to your own sound if you want to from that point, um, or reuse those sounds or change the patterns and you're kind of in some rest some other space pretty quickly anyway so i find that's kind of fine um you know no one gives a shit do they really if it sounds good it sounds good um but i kind of like yeah i kind of like this one as well this one especially because there's a lot of space there gives you that and of course we've got the feedback set to zero so it's just not rolling it's just just giving us enough um, to have a repeat basically because of course we could turn it up it's pretty crunchy so yeah take me a little bit of time just to kind of get an idea of how where you can go in terms of the mix i couldn't like gradual fades in between things is kind of useful but i guess this kind of rolling 4-4 four, four thing kind of helps with that but sometimes i kind of like we did there just i mean i'm not too fussed at the moment but you i find this you kind of drop something and all of a sudden like a complete like and the, the bottom falls out of the groove so finding a way to kind of get that getting getting a sense of that sort of early days at the moment but um yeah we've only got a few parameters to kind of play around with so um yeah pretty cool uh go check out the mike parker bleeper zoid part two track there's like uh i think it's track three of the ep i think it come out um a few years ago now i thought it was more recent but my memory's terrible um i forget what labels them but you know google it or whatever or search it um but yeah, uh, project will be available for download as normal. Um, hope it's useful. Feel free to like change that kick, make that kick better. Um, send it back and show me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> nice one. Uh, I'll catch you next one. Cheers. <laughs> 